Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. Well, we just wrapped up race number one of the 2014 season for Bowman Gray Stadium with the Hayes Jewelers 200. And uh, most of you probably already know by now that we were able to sit on the pole and win the race. Um, Friday when we went over, you know, you spend all day Friday uh, when we weren't dodging the rain. Um, it came a shower and quit and we got a little bit of practice in and then it rained again and it quit, <clears throat> excuse me, and usually from five to seven is when the modified to qualify. And uh, I'm not gonna get into much detail, but just to give you a little bit of an idea, there's, there's all day practice for every division, rotating, and then from five to seven is modifieds only, and then you can qualify anytime you want to between five and seven. You pull up, you say I'm ready to qualify, they clear the track, and they send you out. <clears throat> Typically, most people wait, um, closer to seven because the track starts cooling off and also it gets the more modified rubber that gets laid down the, the better the track gets so what happened is uh, with the rain came in and after the rain quit um, I think it was about six o'clock and that's whenever we were able to, to get the track you know back on the track I think it quit raining about five and then it took them about an hour to get the track dried we got on the track at six and uh, Bowman Gray Stadium actually made a really good decision to extend uh, the cutoff time to 7.45, from 7 to 7.45. Uh, I think that was a smart idea uh, because of, of uh, the track conditions. They were still a little bit damp. Uh, there were some wet spots here and there. And also there were 28 cars there this weekend. So even had they started at 6 o'clock with no practice and said, okay, we're going to qualify, it would have been you know, relatively tough to squeeze in 28 cars um, you know, from six to seven o'clock. So they did a good job by extending it to 7.45. Um, I'm not sure exactly what time we qualified. We did a mock-up run and, um, you know, I think we were pretty pretty happy with the car. We've made some changes that we've, uh, you know, we, we run basically, other than the, you know, I might change some shocks around uh, and the rear end is different from Bowman Gray to the tour, but, you know, this is my tour motor, tour carburetor, and basically the, the car's the same. So that helps us to a certain extent because we can use some of the stuff that we've learned at other tracks and implement it at Bowman Gray Stadium. So uh, there is a couple things that we've learned that we wanted to, to try at Bowman Gray and um, you know we were really happy with the car. The tire temperatures looked good. The car was really driving you know really good for us this weekend and um, you know this is the the old car. This this is a, a car has been around with us you know for years and years and it's got a lot of victories with Daddy and with me, and it has six championships. So it wasn't, um, you know, I don't, I don't want it to sound wrong or you know, sound the wrong way, but uh, it wasn't a surprise to us that it was driving good. But um, it seemed to be driving a little bit extra good <laughs> this past weekend. So um, when it came time to qualify, like I said, the cutoff was about uh, seven or was at seven forty-five, and it came time to qualify. Um, Jason had already been out and ran a uh, 13.21, I think, and then Tim Brown went out and ran a 13.14. And I told the guys, I said, that's, that's going to be tough to beat, but I think we can do it. And, you know, we always joke around about how fast we think we can run. And right before I went out, I said, I think I can run a 13.11. So uh, I went out, and I knew I hit a good lap, but the thing about Bowman Gray, and I've talked about this before, that's my alarm. Um, I'm supposed to do a radio show with uh, MRN <laughs> here in just a second. To me, but uh, it was an awesome night. We sat on the pole, led most of the laps, and won the race. And Jason was third, so pretty good night for the Myers Racing crew. <laughs> just a little bit, and that was my alarm to remind me. So, uh, little technical difficulties there. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, I knew I hit a good lap, but the thing about Bowman Gray Stadium is you, you have no idea until they post that time up on the board.
knew I did a good lap, but it could have been a 30 or it could have been a, a 1. I had no idea. So I came around and, and you know, you're, you're trying to psych yourself up. And I said, come on, man, come on, man. And then they posted the time and it was a 13-12. So uh, that was fast enough to put us on the pole. It was me, then Tim, then Jason. So uh, me and Jason were top three. We... Um, Basically, we didn't. We, we've gotten our car to the point now where we don't change it a whole lot from from qualifying to the race. Uh, mainly, the only thing we do is tires, as far as the stagger is concerned. Um, setup wise, minus the tires, we really don't do anything to the car. So we came back. Excuse me. We came back on uh, Saturday, and one thing I will say is the carburetor that I qualified with is one that we started running at the end of the year last year, and. Um, when I, was, when I qualified, and I noticed it in practice, and we adjusted the float levels uh, to try to get it to, to smoothen up just a little bit, it's a better carburetor than our race carburetor. So you want to get all you can for qualifying because you got to bust off that one lap. But when you first touched the gas, it had a little bit of a hesitation in it. So when we got back over there, and I slept on it, and got back over there Saturday, and I told the guys, I said, I want to change the carburetor. I want to put my other carburetor back on. That is the one that I ran I've run over there for three years. So uh, I knew it was smooth. It didn't have quite the, the juice or the horsepower or whatever. It's just not, um, it's, better of a, it's a better race carburetor, to, the best way to know how to put it. So um, we, got, we called Robert, got Robert to come over, and uh, he checked it, sealed it, and we put that carburetor on for the race. So um, when the race came around, um, it was a real exciting sportsman race. I always like to go up and watch the sportsman race. And uh, Derek Stoltz was able to win. I think Taylor Branch was what in Taylor second, I think. I always have to go back with about five to go. So I think that's how it went. But anyway, uh, it was pretty cool. We got our new crew shirts. I'm sure Steven's going to show some pictures of some videos and stuff. The guys got their new crew shirts. Tommy at Citrus Safe uh, got the guys some, some new, they're pretty hot, some new crew shirts to wear. So, um, that first race of the year, we pushed the car out, so uh, we did all that. The start of the race, I was able to get the lead. We had a couple uh, double file restarts. I was able to hold off uh, Tim. There was a, a restart. I'm not sure how deep into the race it was, maybe close to halfway, and Tim actually beat me off the outside. I wouldn't say he went early, but he went earlier than where they'd been telling me to go. They told me to, to wait till I get to the box. Well. If you wait till you get to the box, the man on the outside has got a little bit of an advantage. So I said, okay, fine, I'll wait. And Tim was able to, to beat me off the outside. And um, I think he led about seven or eight laps, and I was able to get the lead back from him. And uh, from then on, we were able to fight off Jason a couple times and Tim a couple other times. My car was really, really good at the beginning of the race and midway through the race, and I was afraid that was going to hurt me as the race got towards the end because I was afraid I was going to be a little bit too free. And it was, and uh, we got down to the end, and I guess the last, I don't know, about five laps, Tim Brown gave me a handful and was knocking me sideways and, and uh, trying to get by me. But uh, at the end of the night, we were able to, to take home the victory. Uh, it's pretty cool to think about when I heard somebody mention it. That was the sixth time I've won that opening 200-lap race. So uh, as a personal accomplishment, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, just because that's you know the longest race of the year, so that's pretty cool. But um, you know, me and Tim, you know, people are going to say it different ways and say that it was dirty or say that it was rough driving. I wanted my spot back, and I was a little bit aggressive with Tim at the end of the race. He was trying to win the race, so he was a little bit aggressive with me. The thing about it is, is me and Tim can run each other that way. Nobody's car is tore up, nobody got spun out, and nobody's feelings are hurt. Had Tim moved me out of the way at the end of the race, I couldn't have been mad at him because I would have done the same thing to him. He tried to move me, and we ran out of laps. His car was a little bit better than ours, so he had that little bit of advantage on me. But at the end of the night, like I said, we were able to, to take the victory. Um, after the race, me and Tim talked about it, shook hands, and uh, you know, I'm sure that that's going to motivate him to try harder next time. It's going to motivate me to not put myself in that situation again. So. Uh, that to me is what real racing is all about. When you bump a guy and you move him out of the way to pass him, as long as you do it with respect, that's the main thing. If a guy's holding you up, it's like my Facebook. This is the best way, without rambling, this is the best way I know how to put it. Like my Facebook page says, if a guy's using his back bumper to keep you behind him, it's your job to use your front bumper to get past him. 
That doesn't mean barrel off in the corner over your head or try to hook him or try to you know, spin him out intentionally. That's not what that means, and that's not what me or Tim was trying to do the other night. So uh, I've had lots of people talk about how good a race it was, that Tim Brown fan or Burt Myers fan, that it was a great race, and both of us did a great job. So that's all you can expect out of Bowman Gray Racing. I know a lot of fans expect a little bit more than that, <laughs> but, and sometimes you get it. But uh, it was good, hard, clean racing on both ends, and uh, you know I'll, I'll race with Tim Brown like that every weekend. But um, this weekend coming up, we got Twin Twenty Fives, uh, which I'm not crazy about, but uh, <laughs> uh, we've got uh, they'll do the, the we'll go out for qualifying order based on uh, points. So it'll be me, then Tim, and Jason, uh, and then John Smith. I think is the top four to go out. Um, we'll see how that turns out. You know, we, we, we've we've been it's it's a double-edged sword. I want to say we've been fortunate enough to go out first, which is an oxymoron because you don't want to go out first. But that means we were leading the points, so we we've kind of got somewhat used to that and somewhat accustomed to the things that we need to do to make the car the best we can to go out first because track conditions are not uh, they're not in that great a condition when you first go out. And we've talked about on these videos for how many ever years now, the later you go, uh, the better the track's going to be. So um, anyway, we are, a lot of fans have been asking, we're working on a Myers Brothers t-shirt. I hope everybody enjoyed the, uh, the new t-shirts we had the, with the Dirty South with the camo on them, the new hats. Uh, we sold a lot of stuff, talked to a lot of people. The fans came down and, uh, you know, coming, the fans coming down and getting their picture and getting their autograph turned a really good night into a great night so uh, thanks to everybody that came out thanks to everybody that watches these videos and shares these videos um, thanks to my sponsors absolutely my sponsors like I said Tommy at Citrus Safe uh, Tommy and David Lancaster uh, Bryson Industries um, with Citrus Safe Barbecue Grill Cleaner um, Doug Adams Doug and Wendy were there this past weekend too with Adams Towing uh, John at Cleanup Supply was there this weekend Speedway Auto Auction, uh, who's Alan Willard, is the guy I deal with. Uh, Alan wasn't able to be there. He can't make a lot of the races because he's such a busy man. But um, thanks to all these people that make this possible. I could not do this without the support of my sponsors and, you know, the help that we get financially. Um, my crew, my guys, my family. I mean, there's just so many people. You know, I said it in Victory Lane. This is not just about Burt Myers. This is Myers Racing. Um, I couldn't do it without the supporting cast that I have. So uh, they make me look good sometimes, and I do appreciate it. Anyway, come see us this weekend. Thank you so much for supporting us, and God bless you.